of Yehoshua, Perikaf Bet. We're going to be seeing the story of Reuven and God building the Mizbeah. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to assume you know the basics of the story. Right, correct? That sounds good. Right? You're there. Okay. B'nai Reuven and B'nai God, they go to the territory. They build a Mizbeah on the banks of the Jordan River. The other tribes say, they get ready to go to war. What are you doing? How could you build a Mizbeah? And they send Pinhas to go talk to them. And they respond, no, no, no. What we're doing is we're nervous one day. You're going to say we're not part of Am Yisrael. And therefore we're, bu we're building a Mizbeah so that we could tell our children, look, this is the same as the Mizbeah in Shiloh. And therefore we're really part of Am Yisrael. And they go, okay, very nice. And they go home. And this is a story that we have from really Perik, Perik uh, Tit until the end of the Perik, right? So it's a quite lengthy story that's really very strange. What are we talking about? The way my first read, the first time I read the story, the question I always had is, what? You're building a Mizbeah because you're nervous that one day they'll say you're not part of Am Yisrael and therefore you're going to say, no, 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 we have the Mizbeah, it's the same Mizbeah, therefore we're connected to the to the same nation. Like, what, like, what are we doing? And then also, right, so I think that question always had, like, I think, you know, fifth grade, whatever they teach you the story, right, it's always like, did, they, did these people know what they're doing? They had this random concern. Did this concern make sense? Does it make sense? Is it a valid concern? Is it not a valid concern? Like, what what exactly is happening within the story? I think that's like the, the most simplest question that we should have when we're looking at the story. Does it even make sense? What, what are you guys doing? And secondly, and I think it's really connected, why why do I need this story? Meaning, what what ends up happening in the story effectively? No. Nothing, right? The, Nothing happens. They thought they were going to get ready to go to war. They realized, okay, maybe it's good to talk before you go to war. Okay, and they don't go to war. Okay, I, I don't know. So I need the story in Tanakh to what? To tell me when you think you want to go to war, don't go go to war. O offer peace first, investigate first. These are people keeping the Torah anyway. I, I don't know. What, 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 what am I really learning from a story in which nothing happens? It's very strange. And the last question I'll ask is, who is noticeably missing in the story? Yehoshua. Yehoshua. Where'd he go? Meaning, if you're telling me they gathered to war, assumedly, you're not going to gather to war without the uh, express permission of your leader, Yehoshua, who has led you into war for the past 14 years. And secondly, why is he not involved? Why is he not coming up with anything they, they never even says they report back to Yehoshua. Instead, rather, he's completely missing from the story. It's very odd. What do we do with this story? So I'm going to start introducing a couple of things. We'll look closely at certain pesukim that might shed light upon the story. But first, let's, let, me, let me introduce a simple idea. I think this idea is the most powerful idea. It's so counterintuitive. But it's so logical at the same time. What's the simplest reason why Yehoshua is not mentioned in the story? If I have a story and Yehoshua is missing, what's the simplest conclusion possible? It's not implied. What? He didn't know about it. They're ready to go to war and to kill, to kill. The, okay, how could how could it be he doesn't know about it? What is it, senile? He went on vacation. He went on vacation. We we ever have a leader of army? This is this is what. This is the time when you call back the guy from vacation, right? The army Israel leaders were guys on vacation. Again, I'm going to answer you a question. I have a story, and there's somebody who's the leader of army Israel. It's not mentioned in the story. Simplest, simplest understanding of why the person is not mentioned in the story. He's dead after his He's life. He's dead. Yeah. He's not there, right? He's dead, right? Literally, I think that's I missed the first story. 15 minutes, and <laughs> I got the answer God right. Bless, on, God bless you. Okay, right? So right, I think I think that's the most obvious assumption here. We should assume Yehoshua is dead. <clears throat> Let's help out our assumption by adding another piece of information. Who's the main character like in the story on Pinhas? Uh, Pinhas. Pinhas. Wait a minute, it shouldn't be Pinhas. It should be, it should be Al Azad. He's dead too. He's probably dead too. 
Meaning, it's probably taking place not the day after they go to the Nahala, right? It's probably taking place years after, decades after Yehoshua dies, El Azhar dies. And this story is really taking place. Why place it here? Oh, one second. Right? Uh, the story is really taking I'm place. I'm not saying the crazy probably, thing. You saying right, the crazy I, thing. I know. Probably <laughs> in the time of Shufti. So now you can ah, say, why is time of Shufti? Why are you putting it here? Why not there? Okay. Yeah, Who wrote so, it in the book yeah, too? So died. we're going to, what? It's kind of leaving out of the... No, it's out of order. Right, it's out of order, but, who wrote no, but, almost, no, but I want to make a point yes. here. I want to make no, a point here, and, right, and I think this is important. Was Whenever it's out of order, the story has to tell you it's out of order, right? You, you understand what I'm saying? Well, yeah. Whenever it's out of order, the story has to tell you it's out of order. How is the story telling you it's out of order? By not mentioning your story. By not mentioning your story. Or it could have said that he right, died. Right, right, right. It could have but there's no need, right? Because we're tracing. Look what happens. We talked about the Oven and God. They went to the Nahala. I asked that question already. Don't worry. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. I did the answer, right? Don't worry. We did it, right? So we, they got the Nahala. No and this is, this is years after. Years after they got the Nahala. Yehoshua is dead. And and but we're tracing the the what happens to Benegad of Neruven, right? That's on a simple surface level, what right? Why it flows, right? We're just following. We're dropping the Yoshua thread. Wait, no, no, we're dropping the Yoshua thread. Watch what happens. We have Yoshua Benegad of Neruven, and then now I could continue. I have two options. I could continue talking about Yoshua, or I could continue talking about Benegad of Neruven. So I go talk about Neruven and Benegad of Neruven, which could be fifty years later, and then I get back to my stories of Yoshua, right? The, from a simple surface level, it could work. The break in the thing is not even a new line. It's no, by the way, there's a break. It works perfectly. It's, perfect, it's, it's, it's not a. It's not a. Okay, I don't know. It's I don't. Not a, what's it called? I, yeah, unclear it's if you have these so, rules. And I have no idea. I have no idea if we it's, have these rules. In, if you uh, look at the pesukim, no. it's so far fetched. He's saying that that is after his death. What, what do you mean? If I look at the pesukim, I don't find them. It yeah, sounds but you like know, really you find that he sends them off and yeah, gives yeah, them a yeah, 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 yeah. Next line, yeah, 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 okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So not, I, I, not, I, 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 yeah, guru, I, 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 I want, I want to tell you, I want to tell you the problem. No? I want to tell you the problem. So I, the one problem is from the response of Amisel where is Yehoshua, but I think maybe we could even pose the bigger problem: is Yehoshua has a great relationship with Bnei Gad Bnei Ruben. By Yivarechem, Jacob is telling us. There's a fascinating midrash that if you look at the pesukim closely, you the right ha- guy, how you? many times does he bless them? Seven. What? Oh, he blesses no. them twice, <laughs> right? Right? He blesses them twice. Also, he gets a specific right. hazak for right. in the beginning exactly. of the Exactly. Right. Book. So they they're definitely very connected, right? The midrash goes like this: Why is he blessing them twice? Because right in pasuk zat vav, he's blessing by varechem. And then at the end of Pasuk Zayin Vayivarechem, the Midrash says like this, listen to this Midrash, fascinating Midrash, this is so you get the idea, listen carefully. B'nei Gad B'nei Ruven are the, are the bodyguards, are the, not the, the honor guards of Yehoshua. Yehoshua sends them home is before, it, is it yeah, before he gets to his Nahala. Mm-hmm. They go, wait a minute, How is, who's going to escort Yehoshua back to his hometown? They come back. They wait till he gets to, they escort him to his hometown, then he gives them a beracha, and then they leave again. Right? So there's this sense of a beautiful relationship with Bnei Gad, Bnei Ruven, and Yehoshua. If they're so nervous, what are they doing? Speak to Yehoshua, consult with him. If you're really nervous, well, that's and, the next generation but, okay, but, but speak to Yehoshua. How could we solve this problem? Right? And also, again, it makes sense that they're going to say, wow, we just went to fight for 14 years. This, is, I think, is my biggest problem. We fought, we fought together for 14 years. And the children are going to say, our children have no helic below Israel. What are we talking about? We, just, we helped them capture the land. It's the next generation. Things don't happen that fast. And also, what would trigger them to think that? Right? It's weird. It makes much more sense. If we say Yehoshua is dead, El Azad is dead, and already Bnei Gad and Bnei Ruven are sensing over time a distance between themselves and Am Yisrael. We'll get to that, but I'll prove it to you from the text. I think that's the fun part. I'll prove it to you from the text, right? And and I think that's the key to realize Bnei Gad and Bnei Ruven are really not so crazy. But let's take a moment and let's establish something I think very important. And this will be our last piece of introduction before we get to the text. Is 
the land of Ne Gad of Ne Ruven, part of Eretz Yisrael. Let me rephrase. Part of Eretz Canaan. No, no. How do you know? Because it says Eretz Canaan. They went back to Eretz Canaan. Okay, we're going to see. It's not so simple. What it says here is actually going to cause complications. How do you know from the Torah it's not Eretz Canaan? Because it's not originally it's really promised to uh, yeah, Abraham. It actually was. It was it's Eretz Nefaim. Probably, oh, really? right, it probably is promised I'm Abraham and Eretz Nefaim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we're going to do better. We're going to go to last week's parasha, which was Va'it Hanan, in case we don't remember. What happens in the very beginning of Parashah Ve'et Hanan? Moshe prays to enter the land, he's not allowed in. Moshe prays to enter the land. Where's Moshe? He's not allowed in. He's in the land of Neil Gad, of Neil Ruben. He's playing tent of the land. I want to cross over. Meaning, this is not Ha'aretz HaTuba. This is something else. Also, more simple perhaps, in the end of Parashah Matur, Perikul Amadalid, we have a... Gives us the, uh, the borders of the land. One of the borders of the land is Yarden. So it's not really the land of Eretz Israel, right? Keep that in mind. Or Eretz Canaan, let's call it like that, okay? So let's start with Pasute, and we'll have some fun. I just want to hear this is wow. What, you ready? We're going to have some fun. We're going to read this closely. Ready? You're going to tell, you're going to tell me what ha- what's happening, okay? I'm going to pause after the Pasuk, and I'm gonna, you're going to answer me. As if I don't know what's Be'eretz Canaan, fine. Now, when it's telling us, what's the kind of, why, why is it going out of its way to tell us that? What's the sense we get? They're, they're allowed to live there. They're supposed to live there. This is our Pi Hashem. Don't, don't, don't think for a moment, just because it might, it might not be Eretz Kanan, right? It's Eretz Gilad, right? Eretz Kanan, up to Eretz Gilad, that there's a problem with that. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. It's our Pi Hashem. When it happens in, uh, in the Bamgar, yeah. no, no, just... no, Moshe, is, you'll see if you notice, Moshe al pi Hashem, right? He goes and consults with Hashem. Right. Okay. First, he just screams at them because he thinks. Yeah, he gets them, mad right? at them. Yeah, but then, then they once, give him a once, nice once answer. they explain, okay, then al pi Hashem, he makes you up. Fine. Now look at you. Ready? You ready? Ready? It's, it says al pi Hashem. Yeah, yeah. Go. You can look. Uh, I think it's better to climb a bit. You'll find al pi Hashem somewhere in the story. But I, I hope you find it. We'll be, we'll be, <laughs> we're, find we're, it. we're being recorded, but I th- I'm pretty sure it's there. Okay. Okay. Somebody. Ah, uh, uh, oh, yeah. How say? Et asher diber Adonai el Avadecha ken naase. There you go. That's what they say. Right there. Yeah, yeah. But the, the obvious that there's an assumption that there was some. Just idea that somebody was speaking to yeah. God there, right? <laughs> right? God <laughs> commanded Moshe. They made sure it was Al Pia Right? That, that puts it there. Okay, it's there. Now, get, getting back to our thing. Can I say it's clear God was involved? All right. Very we, clear. Uh, this is a yoga class tonight. You are stretching things. Fine, 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 fine. fine. Wow, look at that yoga. No, no, no. Okay, I always wanted to do yoga. But look at shit. Now, look at Pasukyud. You want to talk about stretching? Look at Pasukyud. Ready? And read it carefully. What's that considered? Notice. Gililot Hayarden Ashed Be Eretz Canaan. So which side of the river? The western side. The western side, right? Eretz Canaan. Vayivnu Bnei Gad of Nedogen. 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 So where are they building the Mizbeach? Right by it. Remaining what side? Uh, the western side. So it's not in? It's a Galad. It's not, it's a Galad, it's not in the land. So who's the Halad that they build it on? Most likely that spot. It says it's Ephraim, right? Oh, Ephraim, whatever, it's not there, right? It's not there in the Halad, right? Right, whoever, whoever it is, it's not there in the Halad. <laughs> what? No, maybe okay, maybe it was the other half of Menashe. That's more Now you ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready for the next question? Yeah, right, so right now we have yeah, but isn't it, it weird? Hello, you, you think it's normal that they have a Mizbeah on somebody else's name? On and also they're building the the Mizbeah that they want to build, they're building it on the other side of the river. Weird? No? Okay. Look at Pasukyud. And in Yud Aleph. By Shmu Bene Sel Lemur. He never knew Benedu Ben of Benehad, but has he shivered him in the shea. Etam is bea, ready for this? El Mul Eris Canaan, El Gilot Erdin, El Ivid Bene Israel. 
So where, where, where did they build it? Wool at his on, 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 on the eastern on, side. On, the, on yeah, their yeah. side, on the eastern side. So that way, well, <laughs> so Pasuk Yud, I have to assume, right? I have to assume from Pasuk Yud Aleph, it's really Mul at its Kanaan. So why is Pasuk Yud to yeah, say they built it in at its Kanaan? Okay, so you ready for this? Who's the subject? Who's the uh, people? Who's peop, the people building a Pasuk Yud? Who's the subject of the Pasuk? Menero ven benigrad. Who's the subject in Pasuk Yud Aleph? Bnei Yisrael. who hear about what they did. They assume they built it on their side. No, 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 it makes so much sense. Of course, they're building it on their land. Also, it says that they sent the people to right. Gilad. Right. Just, by the way, if it's on the other side, just knock down the Mizbeah. What are we talking about? Right? It doesn't even make sense. They're not even there. Okay. So what? They went to Canaan, came back, and then. No. They... So from, from Ami Israel's standpoint, it is Canaan ends where? Yeah, yeah. They did. Uh, and therefore, the Mizbeah is Mul Eris Canaan. From the standpoint of Bnei Gan of Nero Ven, they, of course they're building on the eastern side, but what is that? Wow, that's a good one. What, what is that? Yeah, it's they view themselves, we're, we're still part of it. It's Israel, right? What are you talking about? And, mm -hmm. and, and, and no, from Bnei Israel's perspective, no, you're no, not right, part of us. No, 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 no. But based now, on what they have the Mizbeach for, for a sign for the people that live in Eretz Canaan, shouldn't it be on that side? On the western we're, side? We're not there yet. We we're not there yet. By, 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 by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way. The same way they got by, called by, out by, that by they wanted way. to live on that right, side right, in the first right, place right, by Moshe. Right, right, right. Hold off on that. We're not there yet. Okay? I'm saying Moshe to rebut them and then have to go back and then all of got to come up with Okay, wait, wait, Jacob. So you were saying what? It wasn't planned? I know from Pastor. No, Teddy's saying that. Teddy, I, I, okay. <laughs> I know from Pasuk Yud it was planned. One second, I know from Pasuk Yud you wrote. Because oh, okay. what's the word that I have in Pasuk Yud? Yeah, right. what? No, the last word of Pasuk Yud. Oh. The Pasuk is already telling us Lamar E. It's not a sketch oh, what they're doing. Mm. No, when they respond, the right, everybody right. saw it, and now it's no. a problem with Bnei Israel. Ah, no, 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 yeah, no, no, yeah. No, no, then it's telling no, you about no, Bnei no, Israel. No. Oh, it's no, so no, big. No, 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 Jacob, heard about it. You could only interpret that because you know the continuation of the story. If I just read Mizbeach Gadol and Mar'eh, and I don't know anything, it's a Mizbeach for show. It's not a Mizbeach for use. That's how you would read it, which is, I think, meaning the Tanakh no, wants the, you to know right it's away. Mar'eh makes people who see it think there's two separate things here. There's Shiloh and there's this one. No, 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 that's not what it means. Well, it's, it's for show. It's for show. That's a simple, right? What? What? Okay, okay, fine. I think that's a simple right reading, right? With that, right? Limit air. So it's not. They're not actually intending to use it. But fine. Okay, fine. You want to say limit air for a display that we're gonna use it outside we've of We've seen four hundred people already put avanim together as a siman. Okay. Why is here? Okay, let's see. Relax. We'll, we'll find out from the story. But right. But meaning, my point being, what the fact that the Navi is telling us. There's complications with how we view Eretz Canaan, and it might be that what Bnei Gad and Bnei Ruven view as Eretz Canaan is not the same as what Bnei Israel view as Eretz Canaan. It already helps me understand that maybe they're not so crazy that they're building a mitzvah. Meaning their concerns are not coming from a vacuum. And, and you know what? Like what? What a Hashem. Okay. Uh, uh, I think the Mishnah David thinks Yeshua is still alive though. <laughs> I, I don't know what, what the Mr. That David thinks. I don't need it. By the way, Jacob, I want to be clear. I don't need you to accept that he's dead. I think it helps with the out. break. Yeah. No, no, no. I do think it helps understand the mindset of the story. Uh -huh. That the, already they're sensing something. Over time, they're sensing it's not the same anymore. And all these guys are dead. So, so they can't guess, remind us of the stories that once was. The... Right? There's the sense of. Okay, you could argue it's happening right away and it's very proactive. But I think... The Navi is almost telling us, look, it's really happening. How do I know? What's the greatest Pasuk? So you're going to say, hey, it's no, 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 that's too wiggy. Look at Pasuk Tevab. The, the greatest Pasuk. They go like this. <laughs> wait, wait, not, not Pasuk Tevab, Pasuk Yitzh, sorry. Right? The look what they tell us. The greatest Pasuk. History of Torah. Uh, 
ואחזו בתוכנו, ואדוני אל תמרודו באותנו, אל תמרודו בבנותיכם, ולכן מזבח בעל הדין, מזבח אדוני אלוהינו. What do they say? Oh, if כמאה ארץ אחוזתכם. What does that mean? They're, they're reading into their mindset that you view your land as tameh. Ah, interesting. Why, why would you build a mizbah there if you really view your land as tameh? Right? So the commentary struggle with what's happening if you view your land as no, tameh. No, that makes sense. You need to build a place of tehora in the uh, uh, within right, the Right, to sanctify, to right. sanctify the land. Why right? saying that it's... Uh, uh, on the west side, viewing, saying, know, your yeah. mindset is yeah, your land is Tameh. Right. No, no, that's what's happening. Right. 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 This Pasukit Am Yisrael of the west are speaking to Bedenka and Bedenka and saying, yeah. if it's Tameh, what do you mean if? Meaning, but the right. Am Yisrael of the west is, has that in their mind. Am Yisrael of the east doesn't necessarily. Uh, obviously, that's mm. what I'm saying. Right. When Am Yisrael of the west are accusing Bedenka and Bedenka and of thinking that way, it's very obvious that who really thinks that way the West. The West. And therefore, it's very easy to think that if they're in the land that's Tameh, they're already writing them off as people that are Tameh and not part of it. It's just, Which uh, would come Bene. to support Bene Reuven's and Bene Gad's uh, well, whole point. Well, well, we got one more. You can say it's later now because if it was right after, then they just got a bit off us. So what would it be? Uh... Right. Yeah, no, I think it works nicely now. But if you want one more to say we're not crazy, Right, so this one is the clincher. That's why I say this one for last. I think it's the clincher. Right, so the sending pin has been all as a cohen, but as a line is the imimo pen. Okay, now see a hana see a hard of it up. The whole matu Israel. Wait, wait, my math is off here. Right, right. How many matu Israel do we have? Right. 12. How many is the do we have? 10. How is that Lechoma taught Israel? What's your answer? They thought they were Israel. Yeah, yeah, they're not Israel. They're not Israel. You don't need to sell it. You could explain that both ways. The other one's just the whole Israel. It says Lechoma taught taught Israel. Matot, what's a mate? Mate is a tribe. And there's no, we can't say all the people of no, Israel. We when, can't do that. Have, the word matot, have, this is for me. What do you call, what do you call you the, the, nor, the kingdom of the north, right? Yeah. When you have, when you get that split. Israel, because when there's, Wait, wait, a wait, wait, large wait. portion against a small portion, they that's Israel. Are, you, tell, that's are you telling me when they split, one tribe takes the name Israel, even though they're not really Israel only? Oh, so you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a sign a, of a split. Yeah, of course. They're that's viewing it as a split. Yeah, yeah. thousand percent. Thousand yeah, percent. Even, We're Israel and they're not. Yeah, that's for sure. We're Israel and they're that's not. Point. Now, what's the irony, though? Here's where it gets wicked. <laughs> Because what do they tell them? We're Israel and you're not. That's what they're really thinking. You want to edit Timmy and we're not. That's what they're really thinking. And then, and right? Yeah, you're but then really they tell them, us. What, we're going to get punished for your sin. So oh. obviously we're part of your oh, we're wait, together. Wait, wait. So we're going to get punished because of your sin. So you're saying we're part of the same nation. Wait, 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 wait a minute. But you don't really believe we're part of the same nation, right? So you can see who, you can see Am Yisrael is already conflicted. How do we deal with this? Are these really part of our people or not? Yeah, they kind of are because we'll get punished from their sin. But we really don't care about them. They, you know, they have the they're not like the team, they, you know? they're, 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 And then what's the best part? How do I how do I know this is true that they're really conflicted? Because what's their solution to this problem of Am Yisrael breaking off? What's their solution? War. Mm-hmm. Not just no. war. Could you look at pasuk? What is it? Lamed Gimel. Pasuk Lamed Gimel. What do they want to do? It's not just war. It's not just war, right? We say war. It's like done. We're almost. The the to the, they want to the shahid to the audits. <laughs> so you also went. Like, no, okay, right, they right, think, right, they right. Think, right. They think they're part of Abi Sa'el and no. therefore I can't suffer because they're part of Abi Sa'el. So I'm just going to eradicate them. The <laughs> problem is that they, they love the land on that know, side so much right, we yeah, have yeah, to destroy it. So they all move to Ireland. I know, I got you. I got you. I got you. But, right? The same way Moshe was saying you love this land so much. Yeah, obviously, when you. You, there's no way when you're Mishahit the Adit saying you're not slaughtering the people of the land as well. Let's, you know, let's think of the Mabu. Right? The Adit's not the people. Yeah. Uh. It, right? It goes, it kind of goes hand in hand with with each other. Um, okay. So now so now when you think about this, right? Meaning Think of think of the awkwardness of what you're talking about. You're not really part of Am Yisrael, but you're enough a part of Am Yisrael for us to get punished, and then for, therefore we'll kill you, so you're no longer part of Am Yisrael because you no longer exist. It's you could sense 
the, the confusion almost of Am Yisrael. Where does this all come from? Look at what B'nai Gad and B'nai Ruvin say. What's the biggest problem? Why would, right, they're not nervous about uh, assimilation. They're nervous about people from Am Yisrael telling them they're not part of In Lachim Chilek Belohi Yisrael, but Hashem, what are you talking about? And they're going to stop their children to, to worship Hashem. How would they stop their children from worshiping Hashem? What would they do? They're not going to let them to come. Yeah, yeah. Meaning they're not going to give them a visa to cross the border. Oh, there's a border, right? That's the key. Look at that pasuk. Right, pasuk. But this is years yeah. ahead. Yeah, exactly. Then why don't we have Aliyah Regal keeping Let's them in the land, coming to the land every three times a year? Of course they do. They're doing Aliyah Regal, but they're sensing they're not so happy when they come. They're feeling it already. That's the problem, right? All of a sudden, there's, look at this word, the pasuk, kav hey, u'gvul natan Hashem b'neinu b'nechem. And therefore, you'd have no halak b'ashem. There's right. a physical boundary. You understand how damaging the physical Hashem boundary didn't the is? Gvul. You picked the What's the gvul? What's the gvul? It's Jordan River. The Jordan River. Right? Is there any gvul between the other ten tribes? There's no gvul between them. There's no natural boundary between the ten tribes. Here they have a river. And therefore, it's a different country. It's a different operations. They're separate from each other. There's a bridge you need to cross. People controlling the bridge. You got it. So they come for Aliyah. They go one year. And it's like, hey, B'nai Gada, B'nai Ruvin. 20 years later, it's like, oh, these guys again. They're crossing the river. The thing. They start making extra but taxes. They chose to be on that side. I got, I'm not saying no. I'm not saying no. They're not complaining. But they're not complaining. They built... They, what they do? They didn't even talk to them. They built them as Bayah as a preemptive action. Just have half a minute on right. these sides to so, keep right. them together. Maybe By the way, they kind of fall away from the story. If you notice, they, 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 they kind of fall away from the story because they're probably not as much as risk as the other. Maybe they're yeah. just doing something crazy to call out attention. I, I, well, it could be, but I think, no, they, they, they do think to want this as some form of everlasting monument. And especially once everybody knows what it is. It should work very nicely. Can we get so, like an Adayom Azay on this one? Why don't we get uh, one of those? So watch what happens. You ready for this? So B'nai Gad B'nai Ruvin, they have this concern that they're feeling. And it ends up being, if I read the story, it ends up being, no, 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 don't be concerned. Am Yisrael will stay together. For every Sefer Yoshua like, right? But now look at Pasuk Lamid Bet. Oh. You ready? Watch this. By the way, this is a little tangent on Pinhas, right? You see, he's really a person of shalom. He's not the crazy guy who wants to kill people. He's the one making the shalom, right? Shalom. right? Exactly, right? So when even when he killed them, that's how you know this was never going to go to war. Okay, I could have go to war. Fine. But that's what Pinchas ben Azar Ben Nisim, watch this. Me'it ben Nedu Ben. Well, watch this. Watch this. Where is he coming from? He's coming from Ben Nedu Ben, Ben Gad, and also from Eretz Gilad. And where is he returning to? Eretz Canaan, El Ben Israel. Meaning, until now, once it was Ben Israel. Until now, it wasn't was Eretz Canaan. Meaning, even at the end of the story, what's the sense that we get? That there's still... There's still a distance. This, and now, what, is, what book is the story really setting up? Shofetim. Sefer Shoftim. Meaning, the, this unity that you have in Sefer Yeshua... It's a great Yeshua, way to end the Pedic, especially right? if you're going to say Yeshua is dead. Right, no, but, just made it to okay, so then he makes Yeshua. the religious beat with Hashem. It's fine, it works. But meaning my point is that there's this, what is Sefer Yoshua? We get the sense of unity. We get the sense of unity, but yet at the same time, we realize that this unity is very, very fragile. It's not something so easy. Fine, okay, forget about that. Okay, you, what you want? By the way, it's actually, by the way, actually reads, it actually reads as like an appendix, right? It works with your thing, because you're saying it splits. Yeah, yeah, but, and also, it almost reads like an appendix, by the way, that like, okay, he made a brief with Hashem for the people, right, but he, it's like a new story, right? But meaning, meaning this whole Mahala thing, this whole Mahala thing that's been happening for the past 10 Pedakim, culminates with this idea that this Nahala thing could be very dangerous. The Shivatim idea could be very dangerous. Because even though we all conquered Ebed Hayardin, now that only some tribes are living there, we can say, we're in Edis Kanaan and they're not. Now there's a great Midrash that says like this. There's 10 Kiddushot. You ever heard of the 10 Kiddushot? No. You're familiar Kabbalah with it? No, you're familiar with it from Mishnah and Ahulot. There's 10 places of Kiddushot, 10 levels of sanctity. The highest level of sanctity is... 
Kodesh Kodeshim, and then the whole Beit Hamikdash, and Abayit, and then right, the Yerushalayim, right? So it has these different levels of sanctity. Yeah. Oh, this is so, the, so the Mishnah. Yeah. So the Mishnah Ahalot says the Eretz Yisrael. That's all it says. There's a Midrash that says a little bit differently. It goes like this: Eretz Yisrael is Kadosh Mikol Ha'aratzot, and then it says like this: Eretz Kenaan is more Kadosh than Eibed Hayarden. Meaning, mm-hmm. there's Eretz Yisrael and there's Eretz Kenaan. Eretz Yisrael is what? Why? Why is it including Eved Hayadin? What, what does it mean? Eretz Yisrael is any place that Am Yisrael conquered. captured. Eretz Kena'an, the borders of Eretz Kena'an, what the Midas is, is the, is the Givalot of the Shekhinah. Where the Bet HaMikdash has to be inside the borders of Eretz Kena'an. So you could simultaneously be part of the nation, but not be part of Eretz Kena'an. Right? And by the way, it's not a bad thing. Not everybody's going to live in Yerushalayim. Nobody's going to live in the Beit Kodesh or Kodeshim, right? You can't live in the highest levels of Kiddushah. We can't fault somebody for not living in a higher level of Kiddushah. You could fault them for choosing to no, live. No, because then we would all need to live in Yerushalayim. It doesn't work. You can't no, work. It's, it's but, necessity. You, you, they physically chose to live out of an area. Okay. You said that was but but you know what? But it's Eretz Yisrael. If Hashem, yeah, if you get offered to live in the Beit HaMikdash, it's, 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 but, you know, it's but, but it's Eretz Yisrael. You're allowed. You're allowed to. Now, by the way, the Ramban, it's actually interesting. The Ramban, in Parashah Hukah, actually talks about what you say. He actually faults them for Moshe had no plans to settle the land. And he faults B'nai God of Neruven for settling outside the land of the Shekhinah. Not so simple. There are other Alana Mefarshim who said it would have been divided into 12 Shivatim and you would have had people living there. And every day then. And every day you did. Well, fine. It happened to be so. They told, chose it. Fine. But I meaning you get you get this sense that there's it's very complicated what we're trying to do here. We're trying to create a nation that transcends borders based on a religion, but at the same time, we, we want to have nations, and it doesn't really work very well. That right? This is the problem that Amis the Ill faces: that we have to decide what we have in common is more than what we have different from each other. This is what B'nai Ga'an of Neru Ben are trying to say. Now, it's actually interesting, if you ask yourself the question, the, the, to B'nai Ga'an of Neru Ben, does their plan work? What do you mean? Meaning, do we ever come in history, and when we divide the kingdoms, do B'nai Ga'an of Neru Ben get cut off into their own kingdom? When the Rabbi Sam's place in this 27 years ago, they're the first one to get... They are, they are, but it's like 20 years. That's yeah. Hazel. It's 20 years, but they're part of the part of Machut Yisrael. So this, as Machut Yisrael gets attacked, they get attacked from the outside they're, first. They're, 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 they, they actually stay together, though. Right, they, they stay together. The plan actually works. This idea of what Bnei Gad of Nehruven is doing is a way that they remind themselves that our religion is our trump card ultimately... Right, and because this is what they use—the religious angle—and that's more valuable and more powerful than any physical borders, than any sense of nationality. Because at the end of the day, what we are is a religion more than a nation, and that's something that Am Yisrael has been working to really instill within Am Yisrael for a very long time. And hopefully, you know, one day we'll actually get there when we use religion to unite us, as opposed to using religion to divide us. What a way to close. Let me tell